Hello everybody and welcome to another speedrun tutorial. I'm sure you guys are excited about this one because it is a new Dark Souls speedrun. It's a Dark Souls 3 speedrun, but not just any Dark Souls 3 speedrun. It is a Dark Souls 3 boss rush speedrun. There's a new mod for Dark Souls 3 that allows you to, oh my God, look at that beautiful face. <laughs> it allows you to go through the bosses one by one in whatever order you so choose and you can return to Firelink by using a Homeward Bone. So I'm gonna do the normal thing I do. I'm gonna explain what you do in the speed run and we're just gonna have a good time together. You go ahead and you take off the shield and you take off the first two pieces of armor, starting as the mercenary class and choosing the, I believe it's Sovereignless Soul, I think, that you take. I missed it because I was jibber jabbering. The order you want to use is going to be shown throughout the speed run. The first boss you take on is the Wyvern because the Wyvern is a late game boss that gives quite a large amount of souls. And there is a skip for the Wyvern that you can use to kill it at an early level. I am not amazing at the skip as you will see, but I do okay. <laughs> so this is legitimately a bullshit time waster. When the dragon goes up like this, there's absolutely no point. It offers you none. <laughs> It offers you none. It offers you absolutely nothing but a time loss. You do want to take that soul because you need it for the amount of souls we're going to need for this run. But this is the backup strat. You can walk up on this wall and if the dragon does not give you the fire attacks that you want, you can come over here. After he turns his head, get on that wall. He should do a fire breath attack and that gives you a second opportunity to kill the dragon. Now, fortunately, when you die in this boss rush speed run, you spawn back at the fog gate. So you don't lose the normal amount of time that you would because there's not some huge run back, but any death is still a time loss. So it's something you, of course, want to avoid. Now we take on Yorm next because, again, Yorm is a boss that offers a large amount of souls and you can kill without any kind of extreme effort because you use the Storm Roller. So it's just like any normal Yorm fight. Same as always, grab the weapon, run between his legs. It's a little bit more difficult than in the boss, uh, the regular speedrun, because you don't have as much stamina. So... Make sure you back up, play it safe. If you get hit here, it hurts like a bitch. So get charged up. And then typically what I do, I immediately charge. And then the moment he attacks, roll away. But I couldn't there because I was out of stamina. And I get so lucky that I don't die. So here, just continue charging up the Storm Ruler. The faster strat now is to hit him immediately before he rises and not go for another knockdown. And then try to get between his legs to bait the smash attack. Or the like slam down. You'll see it here in a second because I'm going to do it. You stand between his feet bait it out, and then I actually managed to hit him literally in the head with the sword. So that is a headshot, that will keep him down, and that will finish the fight. After you've killed him, you can optionally use the soul, which I choose to do there, and then I go ahead and equip my twin blades back. Now, here for the first time, you're going to see us use the homeward bone, and we're going to go back to Firelink Shrine, where the shrine handmaid as part of this mod has been given quite a few items, and by quite a few, I mean almost all the items in the game, I'm fairly certain, for a certain amount of souls. So you're going to go to the shrine handmaid, and we're not going to get a lot of bitch figure early in this route. That's scary. We're going to go straight for 33 dexterity, and then we're going to go over to the handmaid and buy a bunch of items that we're going to need. Gonna go ahead and sell Yorm's soul, and then we need to purchase one charcoal pine bundle, two gold pine bundles. We wanna get a sharp gem, we wanna get two titanite chunks, we want 12 large titanite shards. You don't wanna fuck up like that, and then you wanna get 12 titanite shards, and then we're gonna buy a small other shield and a grass crest shield, one for parrying and one for stamina regen. Then we'll run over to good old level Blondre here, get our twin blades up to plus seven. We wanna infuse them to being sharp. And then we want to allot our Estus, so we get that extra Estus. And then we can use a Homeward Bone to go straight back to that Fog Gate. The way the Estus works in this is for each boss that you kill, you get Estus up to 10. And then you can buy Undead Bone Shards from the Shrine Handmaid. In the meta route for this, you don't do that, but I do it because I'm a, I'm a little beach. I'm a little bitch. I want, my, <laughs> I want my Undead Bone Shards, but I don't buy them until later. There's a certain point you'll see where I go ahead and choose to buy them. This is horribly risky menuing here, but I end up getting very lucky with the RNG because this is what you want. You want to parry the Sage, and then you want to repost, and that will do about half of the Sage's health, and then just four L1s, take care of business. It is an incredibly nice strat because you used to have to, well... You used to have to wait for the homing soul mass attack. Now you have to wait for the parry, but it's a lot safer because you can just stand in front of the sage. 
and you'll be relatively safe unless he uses the magic attack. Next is Edex Gundir. You're going to use the Gold Pine Bundle and then parry and don't fail to parry like I do here miserably. How did I fuck that up? Thank God I recovered and got it because then you can kill him in three hits. It takes three hits when he's reposted to take him down. I kind of wonder, I haven't tried it, but I kind of wonder how quickly you could kill him if you waited until you had a plus 10 weapon and went there. <laughs> you could probably kill him in two hits. It's pretty ridiculous, of course, because he's the first boss in the game. So now we're going to go wreck Vort. Very similar to how we just wrecked Edix. And just run up, use the Pine Bundle. Going to go for three hits. Or I guess I went for four. Yeah, I guess I go for four here. Four and then two. It takes six hits uh, of the L1s to kill Vort. So right now, we're, we're in really good shape. I was really happy with this run so far. I had been cutting my times down in general, and this was a very good start. Then we get on to the Great Wood. Everybody's favorite boss. We all love the Great Wood. Everybody out there, tell me in the comments how much you love the Great Wood, because I love the Great Wood, and I never die to the Great Wood. Not even once, because why would you, right? You have a plus seven weapon. You have 33 dexterity. It only takes two hits to kill that sack. It takes one hit to kill that, and I go for multiple anyway. And then I walk over, and I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to go for that. And then that guy starts hitting me. And then I'm like, I got this. I'm fine. And then I want revenge on that guy, and I home in on the greed far too much. And what happens? I get... I Yeah. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm just like, I cannot... I cannot believe... I cannot believe that just happened to me. I in in no stretch of the mind did I ever think that I would die to the tree in this fucking run. Cuz it's so easy. It's so easy to bust its sacks and I just got greedy. I just wanted to kill that guy. I did not need to. All I need to do is back off and heal. Questionably even that, because the tree never is able to touch you, unless you're an idiot and stand still like that. So, I took this a lot more seriously this time. I was like, "What the fuck? I died. I'm an idiot." So, that guy hits me again, and this time I'm like, no, bro. You know what? Fuck you. I'm going to go heal. I'm going to play this safe. I'm not losing any more <laughs> any more time. Even though... What the fuck? Oh, I, did I hit the leg already? I missed it. God, what a fast speedrunner. Can't even see his own speed. Too fast. Just one hit to the butt cheek, and then two to the top. I kind of missed there a, a lot. A lot. <laughs> okay. Oh, Jesus. Hit, hit, hit it. Okay. God, I'm getting nervous watching my own speeder. I know what happens. I know the end result of this, and it's still scaring me. That would have been very tragic to die to the tree twice. All you have to do is hit the sack twice, straight on. As long as you get two full L1 hits on the sack down there, it should break. So, clearly, I fucked that up miserably. Anyway, now that we are embarrassingly beyond the tree, we get to go fight Volnir, who, unfortunately, is already active when the fight starts, so you can't go for the safe hits at the beginning. It takes three hits to break the first bracelet, and then you run down to the next one. I believe it takes five. So that's one. Let's count them together. Two, three, four. And then you want to try to be close to the next hand because you get the five there. If you can kill this bracelet with three hits before he moves up, which I get two there. One more is all I need. Then you get a fast kill. You'll see how quick this ends. If you don't and he's able to move up, it takes about an extra ten seconds. So you can save some time by killing him before he moves up, which is easy if you're in the right place. And I believe, based on the fact that my screen just went black, that my game crashed here. And yeah, I can see my screen lighting up. Dark Souls 3, ever since the DLC, has just had a tendency to crash. And granted, too, this is a mod, so it's understandable that it would crash. But this speedrun, like all the Dark Souls 3 speedruns, runs off in-game time. So it's not a time loss for it to crash. It's just an annoyance, but it's no big deal. You can actually install to a mod that will get rid of this splash screen where they uh, go through the FromSoft and Bandai Namco stuff, which speeds it up a little bit, but it's not that big of a deal. You don't have to quit out or anything in this, which is really nice. I don't, I don't, it's just bosses. It's, this is what I want. This is what I want. And this person showed exactly how you could do it. Just start in the beginning of the game and just have the ability to buy things and you get souls for killing the bosses. It's fantastic. Anywho, we go kill Deacons now. It's one hit per small Deacon, even though I fucked that up because I didn't get my full hit. And then it's two hits on taller fat Deacons. So that's two. We got to get five of them, of course. I go ahead and take a quick heal there. Run back and kill this fatty. That's three. We need two more. 
And then once we have the last two, the deacon, the main deacon, of course, spawns in the middle, and we're going to use the charcoal pine bundle that we've been saving on the big deacon. So I go ahead and take out the small deacon there, and now we are going to go get four hits, and then wait until we have enough stamina for two more hits, which I don't do. I don't follow my own advice very well, but it's four and then two with the charcoal pine bundle with the L1s. Kill the deacon, and then now we are going to bone back to Firelink and get more goodies. And we are going to get some goodies that we don't really normally get to get in the speedrun because they'd be too far out of the way. The fortunate thing is that you can buy rings. I believe you can buy all of the rings in the game from the Shrine Handmaid. But before we do that, we're going to get some quick levels here. We're going to level our Vigor up to 13, and we are going to... I guess... I'm confused too. I thought it was 12. Okay, I was trusting me on the screen. No, it's 12. It's 12 and 40. Vigor and Dexterity. We're still not going for that bitch vigor. Then we're going to go sell all the souls that we have to the Handmaid. And then we are going to buy quite a few resin here. We're going to buy 15 Gold Pine resin. We're going to buy 11 bundles, 1 Pale Pine, 1 Human Pine. And then we are going to buy a Ring of Favor. We're going to buy the Hunter's Ring. We're going to buy Pontiff's Left Eye, I believe that was. The one that gives you more attack power for successive hits. And then we're going to buy Lloyd Sword Ring. So we get power... We get extra dexterity for more power. We get more power with Pontiffs, and then we get the Ring of Favor because why the hell not? Go ahead and put your armor back on here. I play it safe here because I forgot to put these rings on before, and I was very upset about it. So we're going to play it safe, go through, use the Pine Resin, and this guy is easy to kill because he only takes five hits. But as you're going to see, mistakes can always be made. <laughs> I really went way too aggressive. This is completely my fault for being greedy. I try to stay back and I'm like, I know he just needs one more hit. I keep trying to get in and every time I go in on him, he keeps doing that back step and I just got so frustrated. And then through the smoke of that other guy, I did not see him coming in for the stab on me. But I can blame whatever I want. The fact is I was just too aggressive. All I needed to wait was for one good attack. And you use spacing against the Watchers. You actually try to bait attacks and then walk away from them without dodging and then go back in for the hits. And I just didn't play it horribly well there. But this time, you'll see what I mean. I'm going to back up for spacing, wait until that goes, and then I'm just going to go in and finish him off. So that's how it should go. But I fucked it up. Same with this guy. I believe he only takes five hits to kill if you get five straight on hits. But I tend to go for backstabs on him because it's a hell of a lot safer. It's slower, but it's safer. Because after this, you can charge an R2, and then more than half of his health is already gone. And then if you can get him before he backsteps away like that, it's just easy peasy. He's dead. So unfortunately, at this point, we lost all of that juicy time that we saved by the... I'd say, at about, yeah, at about Vort. At about Vort, we had had a minute, and we lost it an hour behind. But we got a good old Pontiff here. You're going to want to get your Gold Pine Bundle ready. You're going to want to use it before you go up to him. Then get ready for the parry. Punch him in the stomach. Get that repost. And after you have, you want to two-hand and then do one R1. Only one R1. If you do more, you'll do too much damage. Hopefully he does that attack. That's the best attack you can get. Knock him down again. And afterward, use up another Pine Bundle. Wait until your stamina is completely back. And then four L1s should kill Pontiff. Easy peasy. Hopefully he gives you parryable attacks. The other alternative, he'll backstep and then stab with the purple sword. If you roll backward through that, afterward he swings his fire sword down and you can parry that too. And there's there's quite a number of attacks he can give you. But so far, I did the boss rush speedrun maybe like, I don't know, 10 times or something like that. And he never gave me bad attacks. This guy is actually a little bit scarier. You're going to use a gold pine bundle against him. I try to go up to him, I wait until I have enough stamina back after running for four hits, and then I just try to go for three hits repeatedly. So I wait until my stamina is back enough for three, and then I go in, and that seems to work fairly well, but if he gives you the wrong attack, it sucks. The reason I do the three strategies, it seems to keep him consistently staggered enough that he doesn't get off in an opportunity to hit you, because if he does like a fire slam down or something, with the low HP that you have, you can just get one shot by him, frankly. Very, very scary. All right, we're going to the hardest boss. The third hardest boss. Fight me, bro. <laughs> Listen, she can she can one-shot you. But really, you just want to be careful. Go for about two hits at a time. Make sure you dodge through the hand. Don't dodge with the hand. 
And you're just going to try to get her to second phase with as much damage as you possibly can. I do some rolling around there because I thought she was going to hit and she actually ended up buffing. As always, you wait for six, but then you meme me and you spin out of it early. She normally does six hits there and then she'll do a full spin. And you can roll under that spin and get good damage and just finish the fight right there. But fortunately, she gives me a very safe attack that, yes, is a time waster, but it's very safe. It let me smack that booty, and then I was able to go in, dodge one attack, and get a hit and not die. And I, I've done pretty well against the Dancer in these boss rush speedruns. Again, I haven't done them too long, and I still use a lot of safety strats. But these strats should be safe enough that you guys should be able to use them too. And I think you guys could be very successful speedrun this game. You could probably beat my time. Like I said, I did not... I did not speedrun this for very long. So we're going to go bone out again here. And not too much to do here. We're going to go back and get 14 Vigor and 13 Endurance. So just a little bit of leveling. And then we're going to go to the Shrine Handmade. Buy 10 Titanite Chunks and 1 Titanite Slab after selling our souls. That way we have enough to get our Sword Twin Blades up to plus 10. So that we have a maximized weapon here now. Which will be great. Even though the majority of the bosses left in this run are still bosses that you would want to be near plus 10 for anyway. But Aldrich is a boss you normally wouldn't be, I believe, plus 10 for. So, very nice being plus 10 for Aldrich. As you'll see, Aldrich gets completely melted in this speedrun. And I love it because Aldrich could be such a pain in the normal all-bosses speedrun if he gave you bad RNG. So we're going to use gold pine bundles here. Make sure you're two-handing. You go up, use the pine bundle as you get there, and then get ready to hit, but he moves away. So just dodge, and always remember, go for the body. The body takes the most damage. Uh, well, Aldrich's body, not his tail. As you can see, he's already basically dead, so he's YOLOing out of there. That's I call that the YOLO teleport, when he just kind of like falls into the ground instead of stabbing the ground. He gives me basically the same attack here. Dodge it twice, because he actually has a follow-up this time. And then just kill him. <laughs> Use the second pine bundle before you start hitting him, of course. I could have been very aggressive there and just gone for the hits, but I think I did that in the previous run and didn't realize there was a second attack that followed up that one, and I got smacked and killed, and I was very disappointed. Champion Gundir is actually pretty difficult because of the timing it requires. You're going to need to go up to him and use a pine bundle like you did for the other Gundir and parry. Then you're going to go for three L1s. Then you need to get ready to parry again. Fortunately, it gives me an attack that gets my stamina back. You're going to go for three more hits, and now it is time for second phase. You're going to go back, parry again, wait until you have enough for three, and then fortunately, I'm able to get it there. It's very quick timing. The stamina management can be very difficult based on the RNG that he gives you for his attacks. I got lucky after the first parry that he chose to use one of his uh, slower attacks because it let me get more stamina back. Whereas if he used the quick stab, I wouldn't have been able to get very much stamina. And that can be very costly after the second parry when you have to run away to get away from that attack. Because that one attack, when he calls it, the charge, it can stagger you if you're next to him. And that can really fuck up everything. So here, Osiris is a bitch. He used that frost attack twice. The, th the thing to remember here after using Gold Pine Resin is that all every six hits staggers him so you really want to keep that in mind because you can do extra damage to him when he's staggered and as you can see at plus 10 you can absolutely melt osiris which is very nice because this boss can be such a threat but really that was just me beating him into a corner the only bad thing about that fight whatsoever was that he used the frost twice because that forces you to go behind him and go for excuse me that forces you to go behind him and go for the tail which isn't really ideal. You you want to be hitting him in his ball sack, and he wasn't allowing for it, but still managed to make it worse, work the best that I could. Now comes the prodigal son, Nameless King, one of our favorite hardest bosses. He's a quality boss, and he sure is a hard one, but I still, to be honest, struggle more with the King of Storms of anything here. I still die to Nameless sometimes, usually from silly shit. I've done this fight enough that I don't die much, but that time, I'm like, okay, well, that was scary. I go ahead and take a hit, and it's like, you know what? I'll be fine. I'm just going to go up, get some hits on the head, and then I hit my way right in front of his fire-breathing fucking mouth. <laughs> and I got the unlucky lightning throw. So even if I had been there, usually I get hit by that lightning throw because it's not very common, and I'm already, like, just mashing L1, just like, fuck that dragon. And, yeah. Well, that's the cost of stupidity, everybody. 
but I believe that is the last time I die in this run. So my deaths in this run, I had three deaths. They were very silly, stupid deaths. I got stomped on by Greatwood. I got killed by the Abyss Watchers for being a bit too aggressive with some shitty RNG. And here I just walked in front of a dragon's fucking mouth <laughs> like an idiot. So you can actually manage to stagger the dragon right off the bat and get a very quick kill here. I'm not fantastic at doing it. The way it works is you go for that dive attack. You hit him four times in the head, and then as he's about to jump, you can hit him a fifth time. I never really get it to work, so I just go for it as best I can and just keep doing damage to the head. With the lightning resin and the plus 10, it does perfectly fine damage. Then we're going to use the human pine resin, which you saw I equipped before the fight because it does wonders on Nameless. And there's not much to say about Nameless other than play it safe, go for one or two hits at a time. You can kind of tell what Nameless is going to do, whether he's going to be aggressive or not. Unfortunately, if I remember in this fight correctly, it's not that he was horribly aggressive. I remember him doing a lot of attacks that ran away from me. And I have a problem with that hitbox that hit me. I really don't like that hitbox where he has the forward stab. If you dodge the side, if his body touches you, it still hurts you. And I just never like those things where the body becomes a hitbox that always bothers me in this game or any of the games anyway eventually he's going to do a slam you make sure to just strafe around it by that point you should have the ability to stagger him because of my stamina management there at the time i decide to go for the repose because i found it to be safer and then we're just going to smash well he's going to smash and then we're going to smash pretty clean nameless fight not the best i got hit once which caused me to have to play it safe with getting heals and whatnot because i'm at 14 vigor right now so i really don't want to die because that was a huge time save for me i believe in the splits that i'm going against i died to nameless like three times or something like that i had some very bad fights with nameless here we go against the dragon slayer armor you want to go ahead and use the pale pine resin i go ahead and just use it from the menu i just find that to be easy because he takes a minute to get off his ass and come over to you after four hits he will go second phase if you manage your stamina right, you can get an extra couple hits in there, and then you should have enough time to get four hits in before having to dodge this attack, which will bring him pretty much to death, and then I get amazing RNG here with him going for that attack, which is the best attack he can do. It's an attack that leaves him defenseless, so you can just wail on him from behind. So that was a very clean and solid I like turtles fight. And thank God he didn't turtle. I hate it when he turtles, like with that shield. There's just nothing you can do about it. It's very annoying. So as we know on this channel, Dmod sucks dick at the princes, so I have Normie boning on this split. You don't have to go back here. You're supposed to bone after the princes, but I bone before and after the princes. <laughs> I come back here, I sell all the souls, and then we are going to go ahead and buy two embers, and we're going to buy five undead bone shards. And then we're going to go to the shrine handmaid, or sorry, the firekeeper. We're going to level Vigor up to 27, and we're going to level up Endurance to 24, or as much as you can, because after the Princes, you're meant to level to 27 and 29 Endurance. So basically what I'm doing here is I went back to buy the Embers in case I die. I bought the Undead Bone Shards so I can get my Estus to plus 5, which just gives you a lot more healing potential, of course. It does definitely waste time without a doubt to come back here and do this. You could even do this after Princes if you wanted to. And I would say doing the Undead Bone Shards probably wastes like 20 seconds. But it's safer while you have a time that's not crazy good. And I find it to save a little bit of time later if you find that you're dying to a lot of stuff. and needing, Or not dying, but getting hit a lot and need to use your Estus. So very much struggle with that opener and dodging it because this fight has already started as if you would be going through the fog. And I managed to dodge it very nicely. And then he is just a game of strafing to your right, his left. You can actually unlock the camera and be able to strafe almost the majority of all of his attacks, but I just can't play it that way. I've tried, I've practiced a bit, but I need more practice with it. So I always lock on and just kind of keep rolling toward my right. I managed to take the first hit there. Normally during this part, you don't want to be this aggressive. You kind of just want to roll around until the magic is gone. That way you don't risk getting hit by it. But I decided to be a little bit more ballsy there, and it cost me a bit of time. So now I'm going to do exactly what I said. Time to get in. Just keep rolling to the right. You want to, as much as you can, try to hit Lothric as well. But to be fair, you do so much damage to him that it doesn't really matter. I saw the Lorian self was low there, so I kind of YOLO'd and was like, all right, I got him. As you can see, he still has like 80% of his health, but it's not going to matter. Get four, three, four hits in, back off, and then you should be able to go in and with three or four hits, be able to take him down. 
So now you wait for their dialogue. And after this, as I said, we are gonna go back and use another homeward bone. And all we're doing when we get the homeward bone is selling a soul and then getting the rest of the endurance that we need because the endurance is very useful. It'll give you the ability to get an extra hit in and even more so than an extra hit, it just gives you more endurance after you wail on someone and need to dodge. So it's very, very valuable because the fight coming up can be a absolute run killer, as you can see from the split name. Some of you may wonder why Half Light could be a run killer. The reason he can be a run killer is not necessarily because he's dangerous. Don't get me wrong, he actually can be fairly dangerous. However, the reason he's a run killer is because if he decides to give you the wrong attacks, it can waste so much of your time. Because you really can't risk going in on him when he has his weapon one-handed. Because if you do, he can parry you. The only thing you can use against him in that part is the weapon art. I hope you guys like my sub alert up there. <laughs> the only thing you can use against him is the weapon art. So you'll actually see me, oh my god, using something that's not L1 or R1. You'll see me using the weapon art a little bit in this fight. And I'm just going to say now, I have a god tier half-life fight. <laughs> I have never in any speedrun... All bosses, boss rush, I have never had as good of a half light as I have in this speed run. And probably never will again. I, this is why I'd hate to run against these splits, because it would almost certainly always be a time loss here. I actually managed to get the backstab. You can try for it. It's pretty rare that I get it. After that, you can use the R2. He manages to dodge out of it. And then you're really just trying to kill him as quickly as possible. It often helps to follow up with a weapon art there. Half Light joins the fight, comes in, he's got his magic, I dodge it like a master, and he's already given me the two hand, so I go in. You can go in on two hand, just note that it's risky to do, because if you go in on the two hand, he can give that quick, like, uh, like mash him up combo. What you really want, though, is the bow. You really want the bow. You see me using the weapon art there. If he runs away, using the weapon art safe, but just watch, just watch this fucking beauty. The other guy's coming in. Does it fucking matter? Weapon art, bitch! Oh, so good. He was very kind to me there, though. He had no business keeping the bow out when I was that close. Normally, he would switch to his one-handed, and he didn't. I could not believe that he kept his bow out, and I was not about to let myself miss that opportunity. So now we're going to go to the Bork Tender, which, eh, boss, and I hate this fight in the speedrun. It's just an annoying fight because I don't like the champion's grave tender. I actually like fighting the wolf, but I hate the champion's grave tender. And you're going to see exactly why I don't like him in this fight. After using a gold pine bundle, you can one shot the wolf. So you were using a gold pine bundle here and then we're going to use resin and we're going to go ahead and heal or not because we're full balls. We didn't take that much damage. Again, here it can really help to use the weapon art. The reason I don't like the Grave Tender is because he just blocks. He just blocks so many of your attacks. You have to use a lot of stamina to break through the block. It can be very annoying. He was a lot better when you had a Karthus Rouge and when Bleed was very strong because then you could bleed him through the shield, which just kind of would allow you to melt him even if he was being a turtle. There's probably better ways to get through his defenses. I try very hard here, but I know I need to heal because the wolf is coming in. He takes out the magic, which would be ideal but then he just starts rolling everywhere. He is just Rolly McRollerson right now, all over the place. It's a fucking roller derby in here. And then the wolf is here, and I have never in any speed run had him stay alive while I fought the wolf. I've had him be alive when the wolf comes in, of course, but I've never had him be alive. So eventually I just said, I don't really know what's gonna happen here. Fuck it, I'm just gonna fight the wolf. I need to fight the wolf. I've never had that happen in any fight, not even in the normal game. He's always dead every time. So the wolf is actually pretty easy. After a couple of attacks, he'll buff at about half health and then he's just dead at that point. It appears that he has a buff now, like his sword is buffed after the wolf died. So I was kind of scared. I was like, I don't know what's gonna happen, but fortunately I finally land that last hit. I definitely lost time on that fight just because of the memory with Grave Tender, but whatever, he's dead. That's all that matters. And now we're moving on to Freed, which can be a very, very, very scary fight in the speed run because of the specific strategies you have to go for and relying on Freed to give you the desired attacks. The first phase is relatively straightforward. You just want to bait attacks from her, mash with L1, and if she does the jump away and turns invisible, then you want to take advantage of that and backstab her, use charged R2s and more L1s. I have a pretty bad start to this fight, not only because she gives me shitty attacks, but because I fuck up and take a hit. 
if the ice goes straight up, that means she's jumping straight over. If it goes to the side, I mean, she's jumping to that side. Go ahead and get the backstab in. We're going to get a charged R2. I don't know why I unlocked there. That was weird. I managed to get in some good hits, so I'm like, I know she's dead. If I can just, like, get in and get an attack, I just need two more L1s, and she's most certainly dead. I'm rolling like a roly-poly, and she's hopping away, <laughs> which... I definitely get butt hurt about her recovery time. I still think that's the only flaw of Freed is that her recovery time is just too fast for this game. The problem is if her recovery time is slower, it would make it pretty easy to kill her. So I get why it's quick. It's just annoying. So there is a new strat here that you can use, but I'm not going to talk about it because it hasn't worked for me yet. I do the old strat, go over to this place, sit in timeout, use a gold pine resin, lure him over there. And what you want to hope for, Freed should be using her ice, and she should be staying away from you. If she gets in there and fights with you, it becomes a bitch. And as you can see, she's in Papa's legs right now. She is up in that ass. She is eating ass right now, and I'm about to eat ass. But fortunately, them stacking up actually worked to my favor there, because I started hitting both at the same time. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I'll take it. As long as it works out, I'm going to take it. That's fine. And then, of course, that is the scariest part of the fight to me even though this next part is definitely the hardest part of the fight. That's the scariest part. So I was like, okay, scariest part done. Now we just got to get good and finish this fight in a reasonable amount of time. And then we are going to be in business because I think I lost time here. Like, I think I died before. So going to go ahead and dodge that opener by lunging forward at the correct time, get a backstab, get an R2. And you can never get more than two L1s after a charged R2, so don't go for any more than that. There's no point. The only way is if she gives you a, the exact right attack and stays in to fight you, which isn't worth the risk because you can get baited. Take some hits here from this combo. This combo is e either a four or a six combo. If you're not close enough to her, she won't do those last jumping follow-ups. That can actually be a decent time to backstab, but it really depends with her. I try to only go for backstabs at the very safest times because it can be very costly to run behind her and go for a backstab instead of just getting damage in. Now, this part of the fight was frustrating because I was like, fuck, man. I have her, like, very low health. I just need to get her. And I actually lost track of her here. And I was like, fuck. And then I saw her, and then I'm like, well, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Where's she going with this? Like, ah! And then I get hit by that, and I'm like, dude, do not choke this. What the fuck is wrong with you? Like, you have her at no HP, and she keeps running from me. She almost fucking kills me. I still can't get her. Oh, get the, get the heal in her face, you <laughs> Oh, please, please, please. Okay. Oh, the choke was almost incredibly real, but thankfully I don't. I guess I didn't die to her because I'm still not saving that much time. I clearly could have saved more time there if I had just managed to land a hit at some point. I wasn't getting the best attacks, but still, that was that was a lot of choke right there. So this is also, I don't even have a boning split here, but this is safety boning in every stretch of the mind. This is not necessary whatsoever. I go back, sell her soul, which probably isn't even worth it. You should probably just use the soul in her face. I go ahead and buy gold pine resin because of any fuck ups. I may have lost some resin. So, and then I just use whatever souls I can and put it in vigor. It just gives you more HP for that final stretch where you're going to be fighting some of the harder bosses in the game. At this point... Believe it or not, after 26 minutes, all that we have left are Princes, we have Midir, we have Gale, and we have Soul of Cinder. So we only have four bosses left after all of that. It's pretty wild. So this fight is very much the same as it was in the speedrun. We're going to run over here, we're going to use our Lightning Resin, and we're going to take on the Demon in Pain, I believe. His name is the Orange, the Orange one. <laughs> That's how I know him. Nope, it's the Demon from below. I always try to go for two hits and try to dodge out of that poison. I do a miserable job there, but then just get in his crotch and fight him up. After taking the hit, I'm like, okay, I'm going to play it safe and not get hit by the poison again. And then he gives me the worst attack that he can possibly give, which is this attack where they do about five to eight hits and just run away from you. And the reason it's bad is because this guy's already going to be coming in and look, look at him go. He's doing the same attack. And I'm like, oh my God, please manage to take that demon out or not. I am baited the same way I was baited in this fucking fight. I was like, why are you not dead? So I t kind of turned my attention to him for a second, but I'm like, no, 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 fuck that. I'm killing this guy. I'm not dealing with the poison while I'm trying to fight the demon in pain. So already this fight is pretty bad. You should have been able to kill the demon from below before this guy ever even came over to you. But now that I have only him to focus on, it shouldn't be so bad. My resin is out though, which is not exactly ideal it means lower damage probably one extra hit required 
And it's nice to just get a lot of hits and stagger him and kill him. And I'm doing a pretty poor job of it. I think the, I think missing the early kill kind of threw me off here. Mainly too, because I've been having some very weird fights here. Once you fight the actual demon, there's a strategy you want to do to get his health as low as possible. So you can get a stagger and a repost pretty early in the fight. And it saves you from having to deal with his big spirit bomb. You want to use your resin and you want to run over to his right side, your left. And you want to rotate him. You saw it there for a second, but I didn't keep it going. If you go for one hit and then keep moving to the left, you can actually keep rotating him. And I'd say get about 10 to 12 hits in before he'll move. He always opens with the same attack, that jump up and flame ball. But I mess it up, so that's unfortunate. And that is very costly because, as you can see, this guy has quite a bit of health. He really does. But I do manage to recover and get enough damage in there. I get a couple hits, go for the repost, so I can get some of my stamina back. Typically, I don't go for repost unless I'm running out of stamina because then it's like, okay, it's just worthwhile. I'll get my stamina back while he's staggered. And so I did recover pretty well in this fight. I'll, I'm, I'm very happy that I recovered in that way. This fight absolutely could have been faster, but I did the best under the circumstances that I possibly could have. So that is the Demon Princes down as we are approaching the 30 minute mark in the speed run. We only have three bosses to go and they are some of the best in the game. Now I will say one thing about Midir. I truly believe <laughs> that Midir in some way was stealth updated by FromSoft. I swear to God, because he used to give me very like similar attacks, and he never does anymore in this boss rush speeder. I don't know what the fuck they did to Midir, but he's giving me all these attacks I'm not used to. I don't understand it. I He usually does these like melee slashes, but he's not been doing those. Here he goes for a double bite. I'm pretty good at knowing the tells, but then he goes for this long flame. I do remember this attack for sure, and he would go for it every now and again. It's not too hard. Just dodge the two bites and then iframe through. This attack, I believe, is a three slash. Yes, it's a three slash, and then he goes down with his head. But that attack has multiple different variations with the same tell, so it's pretty rough. This one is insane. He uses six different hits, and then he goes down with the head. But the strategy still is to continue to go for the head. Here he goes for, see, four hits. Four hits that time, and then leaves the head open. It's, it's kind of weird. This one is the big lunging bite, so that's pretty easy to tell because he does the roar first. And then now he's going for the two bites again, and here comes the flame. Yep. So you're going to have to iframe through it again. There's one attack in particular that I'm looking for that I want to talk about. I want to see if he does it in this run. Uh, jumping back is always the worst possible thing he can do, because then he'll go into this shit, and ugh, it's just, this attack's just a time waster. It's not really bad or hard to dodge, but and even if you do get hit, you have time to heal, but it's just a pain. So at this point, he's half health. I'm expecting the buff. When he comes for the buff, if you have enough stamina, you can get some hits in before running away. You can go back in pretty quickly. I start using gold pine bundles. I have two left, so I just start using them at this point when I try to think I can get some hits in. But then he goes for this. This attack is wonderful because the flame is pretty easy to run through if you just wait for a second, and then you can go back in and get hits on the head. I don't think he ever did the attack I was thinking of, which is a shame, but doesn't really matter. I am able to get the kill here fairly easy, I guess. I should have gone for some hits first, but I was dodging those little ghosties. So go back in, get the last hits on his head necessary, and fortunately, Midir is dead. I swear, though, he, this guy has attacks. There's one move he does where he does a melee that he used to do that. He, he used to breathe fire down. Now he breathes fire straight forward, and I never remember that attack happening before, and he never gives me that super easy delayed melee combo that used to let you get like five or six hits in. It was amazing. I loved that. Anyway, moving on from mid-ear, just attack the head. That's really all mid-ear is. Dodge and attack the head. Gale, use your pine resin and get ready for the fight. One of the keys to know about the Gale fight, that, and this is true for the entirety of the fight, every five hits staggers Gale. Use that knowledge as you will to help. You've already gotten four hits here, so I've been counting my hits. This should stagger him. Yep. And then that gives you a good opportunity to get hits in if you have a lot of stamina. This attack is also good, but it's better to be further away from it so you don't have to waste your stamina dodging. So I'm only able to get a couple hits in there. And it's unfortunate too, because that was the stagger. That could have been a very valuable time to get hits in if I had had more stamina. But it's better to dodge and not take hits. So he's being very jumpy, which is kind of annoying. I kind of was expecting him to do the jumping lunge at me, but he wouldn't do it. Uh, go ahead and dodge that. That's always a good attack to get, because it's unless you get some free hits in, it's not hard at all to dodge, if you know the timing. 
So that was a pretty good phase one gale. I didn't take any hits and it wasn't horribly slow. This fight is where I have a little bit more problems. Of course, because Gale is a hard boss, but also because I get greedy in this fight. I really, really do. There's so many times I think Gale's going to do one thing and he does something else. And I'm like, greed, boys. I'm going for it. Managed to take two hits from the cape there. That made me a little nervous having my HP at that level. So I go ahead and heal. I, f I felt like that was going to be a two hit, even from watching it. But it wasn't. You can make sure you get some free hits in on him when he goes third phase here. And then back off. Get ready for this attack coming in, and then it's really just a game of getting good. You got to fight big old guts, and you got to be able to dodge his attacks, which, as a, as a side note, I've been reading the Berserk uh, manga, and I just finished, I think, like, chapter 178, and it is so good. I think it falls off a bit, and by a bit, I mean it goes from, like, an 11 out of 10 to maybe, like, a 9.5 out of 10 after the golden age arc but the golden age arc and everything before it was just so fucking good and it was cool to see where a lot of the inspiration came from from berserk for dark souls so i highly recommend berserk to anyone who's not heard of it or not read anything about it before very very good at least the golden age arc um i would recommend absolutely one of the one of the best pieces of fiction i've read in a very very long time so really, it is just, it's just getting good. There's not too much to say about it. It's just dodging and taking your hits as you can and remembering that he gets staggered every five hits. I had died to Gale in these splits, so that was a huge time save for me. And I had also died to the Soul of Cinder. So this is another fairly large time save coming up. I believe I died to the Soul of Cinder. No, I don't think I did, because my possible time save is zero, so I guess I didn't. A Cinder is actually a fight, believe it or not, that I still struggle with, and it's just because of Greed. It's honestly greed, which is why you'll see me try to play it safe here. I just, for that that attack, when he does that slash and then does that very delayed slash, I cannot for the life of me dodge that attack. Because <laughs> I'm always predicting that he's going to do a quick follow-up, so I dodge and then I end up putting myself in a bad position. He does a very quick change there, and I'm getting frustrated here, I remember, because he didn't stagger. I don't understand how Cinder's staggers work still. It's just like... Why have you not staggered? I don't understand. It's a good time for me to get hits in. It's one of those things where I act on expectation with the bosses. I understand that you're supposed to stagger. And for some reason, he doesn't stagger until the very end, which is horrible. Because that means it's going to take him some time to stagger in this phase, which I don't want. Anyway, once you've finally gotten him to the second phase, go in, get two to three hits. Three if you're confident, two if you're not at dodging that combo. You dodge the first two, run away, and then you can roll through the final one. You will take damage, but it allows you to get an incredible amount of damage on him. I really want this PB so bad that I'm obviously going for some crazy hits, but I managed to knock him down. And then our time is going to be ending here very shortly. You will see that the time used for the speed run is the time that shows on the Estus Flask, which will show at the end as we go to Lords of Cinder Fallen. Or do I not even switch the SS flask? It doesn't really matter. The time the time on the splits is the time that we can call it. It's I think it's probably like 15 seconds shorter or something like that. I don't fucking know. I don't know what determines it. I guess it's that the boss rush doesn't start until you pick up the Ash and Estus, which I never mentioned that, by the way. That's how the boss rush starts. You pick up the Ash and Estus flask in the very beginning. But this is everything I ever wanted from a Souls game. I, I, like at this point, after of course playing all the good bosses, going through the good music, going through the great level design, world design, all the awesome things that the Souls games have to offer, a boss rush is what I wanted. So I would like to say a huge thanks to the person that made the boss rush. You made my Souls dreams come true, my friend. I am incredibly grateful. So I'm gonna put a link to the Reddit post that they made that has a link for anyone on PC who can download this mod. If you are on PS4 or Xbox One, you will unfortunately not be able to download the mod because modding is a PC exclusive thing, but it's a very simple mod. All it takes to install, just unload the zip drive, and then all you have to do is just paste it in your Dark Souls game folder, and inside you can actually read the read me which will give you information on how to vary the boss order if you want to do that you can put them in any order you want to you can put it on any new game cycle there's tons of different stuff you can do i highly recommend you check it out if you are looking for something to shake up your dark souls 3 experience this is the end of me talking about dark souls 3 i can't imagine i have any other videos that i'm gonna be making on it unless some other crazy speedrun comes out that i want to do or i get some crazy urge to go back to speedrunning the game so i hope you guys enjoyed this speedrun very much i'm looking for more speedruns to do on twitch i'm still doing cuphead runs for fun 
And I'm thinking about doing maybe Mario Odyssey runs, maybe something along those lines. I don't know. I'm thinking about stuff for the future because I know you guys like these commentaries and I very much enjoy doing them with you. This one was a bit shorter than our normal ones, but that's because I'm so fucking fast, boy. No. I love you guys very much. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you again very, very soon. Have a good day, guys.